let us discuss about the op-amp design. So, we all know that op-amp symbol is something kind of this. We have a differential input. So, we can think, we can think about op-amp as a differential amplifier. And first we design a differential amplifier. And let us check whether it meets all the requirements of an op-amp. If it is meeting all the requirements, one differential amplifier is enough. But if it is not meeting all the requirement, we will think about what are the other stages what that we need for pop-up design. So, first of all I want to say that generally in our operational amplifier, the first stage will be a differential amplifier. Then there will be one more gain stage. Uh, because we will not get much gain from one amplifier. Suppose we need a 100 dB gain, we will not get this from one amplifier, we will get max, or uh, assume it is 50 from one amplifier and 50 dB from other amplifier. And finally we will need a buffer stage here. Okay. So if we have an op-amp without a buffer stage, it is called a transconductance amplifier. So first we will design the differential amplifier stage, we will analyze the circuit, then we will design the second stage and the final buffer stage. So let's make the requirement, we, are, we will be using UMC 180 nanometer process. So the VDD is 1.8 volt. Let's design for a voltage gain of say less, greater than 100, that means 40 dB. 100 means 20 log 100 is 40. Gain should be greater than 40. It is not good enough for our op amp, but from a diff amp, this, this is okay. You, we cannot get much gain from a diff amp. So the load capacitor is 10 picofarad. Input common mode range maximum, that is positive input common mode range is 1.6 volt. I will explain what this really mean. Out and uh, minimum common mode, that is negative common mode range is, common mode voltage is 0.8 volt. Slow rate. Uh, 5 volt per microsecond and uh, yeah power dissipation power dissipation less than 0.3 milliwatt ok we are going to design a differential amplifier with that meets all these requirements. So, <coughs> we all are familiar with the differential amplifier structure. So this is basically, this is a symmetrical structure that we are saying M3 is equal to M4, M1 is equal to M2 and the same current is flowing through this branch and this branch. So if I0 is the total current that is going through M5, I0 by 2 is will be flowing through M3 and I0 by 2 will be flowing through M4. So if we want to design a differential amplifier, what we have to design is the W by L ratio of M3 we have to find, M4 we have to find, M1, M2 and M5. M1. M8. So in CMOS design means we have to find the W by L ratio of all the MOSFETs in the design, in the circuit. So basically in any amplifier we have to make sure that all the MOSFETs are in saturation. So we have to make sure that all the MOSFETs are in saturation. This is a basic criteria for any type of amplifier. Then 
Uh, see, the designing is little bit different from the analyze. So when we analyze an amplifier, we go for the analyze the gain and uh, output impedance and those things. But I'm coming to specific to specifically to the design requirement. We have to design a differential amplifier that meets these requirements. So from where we will start? We have to find the W by L ratio of M3, M4, M1, M2, M5 and M8. So we will start with M. Uh, okay, we will start with first. We have to find the I zero. First, we have to find how much current, uh, how much DC current we need. How we will find I zero is this is from slow rate. So slow rate specification is provided to us. So we will find first. We will find the I zero from the slow rate. So once we get the I zero. I0 we will find M3 and M4 from input common mode range maximum maximum input from maximum input common mode voltage we will find the dimension of M3 and M4 and M1 M2 we will get from gain bandwidth product so the gain bandwidth product is given to here Oh, I missed that. Gain bandwidth product should be uh, equal to or uh, greater than 5 megahertz. So these are the general specification that we get from for op-amp design or diff-amp design. So we will find the dimension of M1 and M2 from gain bandwidth product. Then M5 we will get from input common mode range of voltage minimum minimum input common mode voltage we will get m5 and m8 design we will we can easily derive from i0 and m5 design we will easily get the design of m8 so we will step by step we will design all of these uh, device sizes then it is easily we can finish the design okay Let's start with slow rate. Slow rate is see the theory regarding the slow rate is explained in every textbook, so I'm not going to the theory. So what uh, we should understand regarding slow rate is it is the maximum rate of change of voltage in the output. So in here in the output we have a capacitor here. It is the C. And the charging or discharging through the capacitor is done by charging of the capacitor is done by one BMOS. It is what is what is the name? It is M4 here in our circuit. The charging of the capacitor is possible through M4 and discharging is through M2. So I am just uh, drawing this circuit again. Or in slow rate point of view. So it is M. This is PMOS and this is MOS. So slow rate is a maximum rate of change of the output voltage. So this happens, slow rate happens in a different we, we know that we have a okay, the, say this is a symmetrical we have one more branch here so slow rate happen when one branch is completely off and one other branch is completely on so when we apply a differential voltage that is uh, in the extreme case is that one branch may go to complete off and other branch will uh, sink all the current so if this is sinking all the current or this is sourcing all the current how much it should have to sink or source uh, to meet the slow rate requirement. So slow rate is the so this is the output voltage. So we need maximum rate of change of the output voltage. We need dV by dt. So for a capacitor we know C equal to Q into Q equal to C V. So dQ by dt 
that is the current that equal to c into dv by dt from that uh, dv by dt equal to i by c so slurite equal to i0 by c so this current we are labeling as i0 so slurite requirement is provided to us we know the ce value it is cl output capacitor value from this we can find the i0 so i0 equal to slurite into cl in our design uh, okay slurite is provided as 5 volt 5 volt per microsecond so that will become 5 mega into CL is 10 picofarad that is 50 micro so we need I0 equal to 50 micro ampere so that means we need 50 amps of current 50 microamps of current flow through this capacitor this is this MOSFET this is I0 so if 50 micro ampere is flowing through this MOSFET 25 micro will flow through this branch and 25 micro will flow through this branch so we know the current through all the device now so current through M3 is 25 micro current through M4 is also 25 micro I am talking about the DC current now current through M1 is also 25 micro because this is a series connected branch and current through M2 is also 25 micro so they, they will add up here and the current through M5 is 50 micro ampere ok so the first requirement we have finished we finished the design of I0 from the slow rate we found what is I0 now we, we have to design the W by L ratio, aspect ratio of M3 and M4 that we have to design from input common mode voltage. So input common mode voltage is given as 1.6 volt. It is a maximum input common mode volt. See what is the uh, problem in this? Suppose we applied input, suppose in this terminal we applied a high input voltage. What is going to happen? So what are the limitations in there that we will discuss in, in this session uh, of the design of M3 and M4. We already said that the dimension of M3 is equal to M4. For, so the, for the simplicity, I am not considering this part. So I am just drawing this part of the circuit. So it will look like uh, we have VTD here. Then one VMOS. This is M3. It is diode connected. And this NMOS M1. Suppose this voltage is Vx, this is the input voltage, so we, are, we, are, we have to find how much this voltage can go. If we increase this V in, and what is the maximum limit of that V in, that is given as, see we cannot increase this uh, according to our wish, because if we increase this very much, uh, this M1 will go to triode region. See what is the condition of this M1 to be in saturation? That is, this VDS should be greater than VGS minus VT. VGS should be great. VD, oh sorry, VDS should be greater than VGS minus VT1. Okay, this is the M1. That's why we put VT1. So what is the VDS here? So this is not grounded in our design. Suppose this is any value. Suppose this is V1. So VGS is voltage across these two. VDS is voltage across these two. So V1 is common for us. So it doesn't matter. So voltage at the train should be greater than voltage at the gate. 
minus threshold value. So voltage in the drain here is assume it is Vx. So we need Vx should be greater than V in here we are considering how much maximum V in can go. That is common mode voltage plus ICMR plus maximum common mode volt input. So that is given to us. So maximum we should able to apply 1.6 volt without turning any MOSFET into triode region. So this is given to us. So even if, if we apply 1.6 volt, this MOSFET should not go to triode. This MOSFET should not go to triode. So what is the condition for that? That we are design, designing. So it is given as the V in minus VT1. So Vx is should be greater than or equal to V in maximum we have given as 1.6 volt minus Vt1. So the threshold voltage of this MOSFET we don't know now. So we have to find that threshold volt was MOSFET. What we can assume for this process it is 0.45. See, I mean, all this equation we will use in this will be an approximate equation. So, there is no point in going for the exact value. First, we will uh, design the circuit for some approximate value. Then, we will do the tuning of all the MOSFETs to get the exact result. So, what we got is our Vx should be greater than 1.6 minus 0.45. That means 1.6 minus 0.45 is 1.5. So assume our Vx, sorry, Vx equal to 1.2 which is greater than 1.15. So what we got here is if Vx is 1.12 then what is the VDS of M3? So VDS of M3, VDS of M3 equal to VDD minus Vx. Then that is VDS. Or since it is a diode connected, we can say it is VDS also. So VD minus 1.2. VD we know it is 1.8 minus 1.2. So VDS is 0.6 volt. So if you need a 0.6 volt across this MOSFET, uh, we know the current through I3, current through M3 is 25 microamps that we know. 